Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This week's story, A Woman in Mysterious Lab Sex. This is episode 452. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. The November patron-funded story is Extra Credit by Nyla Luster. Nyla specializes in the offbeat and avant-garde subgenres of erotica. This includes fantastical forays, steamy sci-fi, and maybe even a smidge of shifter or paranormal. When Nyla's not writing, she can be found gaming or curled up with a good book and a dirty martini. You can find her website at nylaluster.wordpress.com. The story is narrated by a Poponax, the voice of the Flash Pulp podcast at skinner.fm, an experiment in broadcasting fresh pulp stories in the modern age. Three to ten minutes of fiction brought to you every week. Here we go. Extra Credit by Nyla Luster Test subjects wanted. Earn extra credit and extra cash while you advance science. Flexible appointments. Contact Professor Farrow, Faculty Office B6. Macy took one of the flyers pinned to the bulletin board outside the psychology lab and carefully tucked it into her canvas backpack. She wasn't doing as well as she had hoped in her abnormal psychology class and could use both the extra points and extra cash. She'd never had Dr. Farrow for any of her classes, but she'd heard that he was an eccentric teacher. After her last class of the day, she headed over to the faculty building and wound her way down an ancient staircase to the basement level. The dim lighting overhead made the corridor look extra creepy. She only saw one light on, spilling through a half-open door. Crossing her fingers that she hadn't made the journey for nothing, she crept up to the door. Dr. Farrow was on the phone, whispering. I know I said it'd be ready next month, but more testing is needed, he said, nervously tapping his fingers against his desk. As if sensing her presence, he turned to the door and motioned that she sit in an uncomfortable, lumpy chair on the other side of his scarred wooden desk. Right. Well, we may have the answer to that. I'll check in with you next week, he said, before dropping the receiver into its cradle. Macy couldn't help staring at the old-fashioned phone. She'd never used anything other than her cell phone to make a phone call. Dr. Farrow ran his fingers through his beard as he observed her. Macy adjusted her pencil skirt nervously, wondering if she should have worn something less conservative. I don't recognize you. You aren't in one of my classes? he asked. No, I mean, I'm majoring in psychology, but I'm only a sophomore. I am still working on my prerequisites before I can enroll in any of your classes, Macy said, wondering if that would make her ineligible for the experiment. Dr. Farrow waved his hand as if dismissing her comment. So then, why are you here, Miss... Haverstein. Macy Haverstein. I saw this, she replied, extending the folded up flyer. Dr. Farrow's expression brightened when he realized she was volunteering. He reached into a desk drawer and took out a thick folder filled with loose-leaf papers. Oh, excellent. Well, here's your packet. I'll need the consent form returned to me with the questionnaire. Once we have those two things, we can get you scheduled for a time in the lab for your first session, he said. Macy's delicate hand sagged under the weight of the folder. I was wondering, um, how much would I be earning? She asked. Oh, it's $100 for the questionnaire and then $75 for each lab session. There are three lab sessions total, each lasting about an hour. If you need extra credit, then a total of 50 points is awarded after the completion of the experiment, he replied. 50 points would bring her high C into the solid B range. There was no way Macy could pass down this opportunity. Great. When do you need this back by? she asked. Monday, if possible. That way you have the weekend to work on it. I want you to really take your time with the questions. Rushing through it will only lead to a subpar experience in the laboratory, he said, turning back to his stack of papers, and dismissed her. 
Sunday morning rolled around and Macy begrudgingly pulled out the folder to get started on her experiment paperwork. She had pulled an all-nighter on Thursday and still hadn't fully recovered. Filling out the consent form was fairly easy. She skimmed through the legal section, noting that she was signing away any right to hold the university or Dr. Farrow responsible for any harm, physical or psychological, that she might sustain by participating. Macy knew a few students who had participated in experiments on campus, and none of them had been dangerous. She rationalized that this was standard procedure, meant to cover their uh, assets, just in case. She thumbed through the questionnaire, which was ten pages of questions with bubble answers to fill in. Sighing, she decided to make a cup of tea to help her power through this. She understood now why some people would just start picking random answers. Question one. What sexuality do you identify with? Well, that was easy enough. She was definitely attracted to men. Question two. How many times per week do you masturbate? Macy read ahead to some of the other questions and noticed that they were getting progressively more personal. If she wasn't afraid of not passing introductory abnormal psychology, she would blow this off. Trying not to think too hard about her answers, she quickly worked her way through the questions. She answered semi-honestly, but drew the line when it came to whether she was vocal during orgasm or whether she had ever squirted. Luckily, there were a few questions with the option of I choose not to respond. Being forced to focus on her intimate life, or lack thereof, made her wonder exactly what the lab portion of the experiment was going to consist of. Electrodes on her forehead while she watched BDSM porn? Would the university really endorse a sexually explicit study? The next day, Dr. Farrow wasn't in his office, so she slipped the folder under his door. She put the questionnaire out of her mind as she prepared for her statistics midterm. After her classes, she was scheduled to work her waitressing job at an upscale steakhouse. It was unusually busy for a Monday night, and Macy didn't have the chance to take her break until after 8 p.m. There was an email from Dr. Farrow sent to her school email address, along with a payment for $100 for completing the questionnaire. Dr. Farrow's message was very brisk and businesslike. Dear Miss Haverstein, thank you for submitting the questionnaire. You should be receiving payment shortly. You have been approved to move on to the next stage. Your first laboratory session is scheduled for tomorrow at 1 p.m. Please report to the second floor laboratory 15 minutes prior to your scheduled time. I look forward to seeing you then. Dr. Farrow. Macy actually had a break between noon and 2 p.m., She wondered if Dr. Farrow had looked at her schedule, or if the time was just a coincidence. She focused on getting through the rest of her shift and went home exhausted, too tired to do any studying. Macy sat outside the lab, finishing her cob salad when Dr. Farrow arrived at 12.45 p.m. on the dot and unlocked the lab. He nodded to her as she followed him inside. Thank you for getting your paperwork back promptly. I did want to go over what will take place during the session. You will be in a private room viewing some images and listening to some audio clips while we measure your brain waves. Now, this won't hurt. We're just interested to see how you react to certain stimuli, he said. Macy nodded, thinking to herself that maybe watching porn wasn't so far-fetched now. She was escorted into a sterile-looking room with a small TV and old-school headphones. A clinical assistant placed electrodes and a heart rate monitor on her finger. He might as well have been a robot. He didn't smile or try to engage in small talk to put her at ease. Once she had settled in, Dr. Farrow checked in with her through a small speaker in the ceiling. Okay, Miss Haverstein, we're just going to show you a few video clips to start, he said. Macy nodded, then realized he might not be able to see the motion. Okay she replied. The first clip was very PG-rated. It showed a man and a woman on their first date. The man took the woman's hand and brought it to his lips. The second clip was a clip from a popular movie, with a couple of well-known movie stars making out passionately. The third clip was a little more risque. It showed a gorgeous woman wearing lingerie and a ball gag in her mouth. Her hands and feet were secured to the bedposts, 
She looked surprised when a masked man entered the room. He began touching the inside of her leg, his hand just grazing the side of her groin. The woman's eyes widened as his hand fondled her breasts, pulling down the lingerie so that her nipple was exposed. The masked man tugged on it, causing the bound woman to arch her back. And then it was on to the audio clips. These were less exciting, and there were more of them. A few featured men with foreign accents, and Macy felt a shiver go through her when a man with a Latin accent started speaking. Before she knew it, the lights were turned back on, and the same clinical assistant came in to untether her. An envelope with cash was waiting for her, along with a handwritten sticky note saying he would be in touch to schedule the second session. All in all, that was the easiest $75 Macy had ever made. It was two weeks later, and her second appointment still hadn't been scheduled. This was making Macy nervous, since Dr. Farrow had disclosed that she wouldn't receive her extra credit until the conclusion of the experiment. She had planned on stopping by his office after class, but he must have been psychically in tune with her thoughts, because another email was waiting for her when she checked her phone, as she was packing up her books. She was to report to the lab at 3 p.m. today. It was a little short notice, but as long as the session didn't run over an hour, she could make it work. This time, she was escorted into a different room that was partitioned into two sections. The same medical monitoring equipment was hooked up, and she was instructed to get comfortable in a ratty-looking recliner. The lights dimmed, and Dr. Farrow was nowhere in sight. Just as she was getting ready to untangle herself from the wires to go search for him, someone cleared their throat on the other side of the partition. Macy jumped a little, startled that she hadn't realized she wasn't alone. Please, I didn't mean to scare you, the voice said in accented English. Macy recognized the tone and timbre as one of the men she had listened to an audio clip of weeks ago. Her heart started to beat a little faster. I hate, um, is this part of the experiment? she asked. Indeed, it is. I will remain on this side of the divider, and we will just talk, yes? he asked. Okay, Macy said, her eyes on the door. If he tried anything, she could be out of the room in four steps. You are Macy, yes? Yes. What do you study here at this school? he asked. The conversation continued on a very normal line of questioning as he got to know her. Any attempt she made to find out more about him was gently brushed aside. The conversation quickly turned to what she would like to do if they were ever to go out on a date. Macy quickly thought back to the candle at dinner and threw that out as an option. She didn't really see the point of playing pretend with someone she couldn't even see. However, he asked her to visualize the two of them in the restaurant, even going so far as to ask her to order from a menu that was on a table next to the armchair. The menu featured Italian food, her favorite cuisine. He ordered a hearty lasagna, and she chose shrimp scampi. She almost took it back, but brought herself back to reality when she realized this wasn't a real date and there would be no goodnight kiss. He instructed her to blindfold herself after ordering, to more fully allow herself to visualize the setting. She did, still a little nervous that she was alone with a stranger, there was no two-way glass in this room, but surely Dr. Farrow was monitoring this session somehow. Perhaps by hidden camera? A short while later, the smell of shrimp scampi and tomato sauce and cheese filtered through the room, and her mouth watered. She was instructed to keep her eyes closed and stay very still. She almost jumped back in surprise as someone took her hand. As though reenacting the scene from the clip, he brought her hand up to his mouth and kissed not only the tip of it, but also in between her middle finger and index finger. A jolt of pleasure ran straight down to her nether regions. Macy was disappointed when he announced that their time was up, but asked if she would like him to be her partner in the last experiment. Macy readily agreed. She was instructed to leave her blindfold on. Her mystery man retreated to his side of the room as the clinical assistant swept into the room again and removed her blindfold and electrodes. Macy looked longingly towards the dark partition, very curious as to whether his voice wasn't the only hot thing about him. 
The assistant ushered her out of the room, and another envelope was waiting for her with cash. By the end of the week, Macy was checking her phone constantly, anxious to complete the final experiment. Friday afternoon rolled around, and she took the initiative to drop by Dr. Farrow's office. Uh, Miss Haverstein, how can I help you? he asked. I was just wondering when I might complete the final experiment, she asked. Oh, oh, I'm sorry that you weren't notified. We collected all the data we needed from you during the last session. I've already spoken with Dr. Wallace, and you should be seeing your extra points applied sometime in the next few days. Oh, Macy said, crestfallen. Is something the matter? he asked. It's silly. I just like to finish a project once I start it, she said, unwilling to admit that she couldn't get the mystery man out of her head. Dr. Farrow leaned back in his chair, examining her expression. I see. Well, the funding for the experiment has been cut off. If you want to participate in the final session, I can arrange that for tonight, but you won't be paid, he replied. She was scheduled to work tonight. Quickly weighing the consequences of calling out sick at work versus never seeing her partner again, she took a leap of faith. Okay, when? Say, 8 p.m.? Oh, and you'll need to come to my home. Since the university is no longer sponsoring this, I can't use the lab, he said. Macy nodded and took the piece of paper he handed her. Even though she knew she should be more cautious about going to a professor's house off campus, she knew a few students who had gone over to Dr. Farrow's to study. Macy had just enough time to run home and shower. She changed into dark trousers and a fitted burgundy blouse, hoping she wasn't overdressed. Blinking away tears as she put her contacts in, she realized how silly she was being. It wasn't like this was a date. One hour later, she pulled up outside a well-lit house in a nice suburban neighborhood. Dr. Farrow ushered her inside. She was surprised to see the same clinical assistant waiting to make her look as unsexy as possible with wire accessories. Dr. Farrow took her aside and spoke seriously to her. Miss Haverstein, if at any time you become uncomfortable, please just speak out. We can hear what's going on at all times, and remember, no scientific discovery ever came without experimentation, he said. Macy nodded, excited to begin. She was escorted into a bedroom. On the bed was a red ball gag and some restraints, along with a blindfold. The dark divider was back, and she could sense that he was behind it. There was soft music playing in the background. The comforter felt satiny against her palm as she sat down. Hello, Macy. His voice floated above the divider. Hello. It's silly, but last time I didn't catch your name, she replied. Oh, you may call me Peter, he said. Peter. She liked that name. It was strong and traditional. So how have you been? she asked. I've been fine. I was excited that I would get to see you tonight, he responded. (sighs) Me too, she confessed. Would you mind putting the blindfold on? I am aching to touch you, he said. Without giving it a second thought, she tied the silk blindfold tightly around her face. Within a few seconds, she heard him shift from behind the divider and sit beside her on the bed. He cupped her chin in his hand and turned her face towards him. She opened her mouth, inviting him in. He traced the top of her lip with a cold fingertip. Then he moved his finger down her neck, encouraging her to lay back by placing his hand against her chest. Drunk on sensory deprivation, Macy did and wasn't surprised to feel her wrists being tied, and then her feet. She must have been more turned on than she thought by that scenario. She didn't care that she had never seen this man and likely never would. She had fallen hard for a voice. A faceless voice. She felt his weight settle again on the bed, and he ran his cold hands along the inside of her arm, making it tingle. 
Do you want me to touch you under your clothes? He asked. Yes, she whispered. He pushed her blouse up over her stomach, kissing his way up the trail to her breasts. Macy giggled slightly because it tickled. The closer he got to her breasts, the hotter she became. He moved her blouse over her mounds, revealing a purple satin bra. He traced the top of it with his finger before pulling it down. Her tits tumbled out, and she heard him murmur with appreciation. His mouth sought her rosy point, slowly moving his tongue back and forth over her nipples. Macy felt her desire growing. Do you want me to touch you further? he asked. Yes, God, yes, she responded quickly. His hand snaked its way down her trousers, quickly unbuttoning them. She could smell how ripe her pussy was, slick with lust. She felt pressure against the skimpy material of her panties as his whole hand pressed against her crotch. She pivoted her hips, inviting him to do more. Please, she begged. He ran the head of a dildo inside her inner lips and then pushed it south, whisking past her asshole. It settled back on the head of her clit, and she felt the electric pulse of lust. Not a stranger to vibrators, she was happy to discover that this one had more than enough power. When the stimulation got too intense, she whimpered. Peter took it away for a moment, giving her a chance to recover. After what seemed like an eternity, she decided to ask for what she really wanted. Peter, I need to feel you inside of me, she implored. As you wish, he responded. She heard the sound of his trousers being unzipped, and then a warm, throbbing cock arrived at the entrance to her passion tunnel. He pushed against her slowly, inching his way in, then retreating. It took seven thrusts before he filled her cabin up entirely, each one a little harder than the last. Peter turned on the vibrator again, positioning it between them. Unable to move anything but her hips, she settled into his rhythm, encouraging him to fuck her faster. Three orgasms later, she was marveling at his stamina. He still hadn't come yet. The friction was starting to burn her a little. Are you close? she asked. Oh, closer than you know, he breathed against her neck. A moment later, his rod spasmed in pleasure, and he cried out. Macy lay there for a moment, enjoying the feeling of having been thoroughly fucked. He shifted off her and untied her limbs. She moved to take the blindfold off, but he pushed her hands away. Wait, Dr. Farrow will be in shortly, he said. Dr. Farrow, that was right. A wave of embarrassment crashed over Macy. Had he seen the whole thing? She quickly dressed herself again, just in time as a curt knock sounded on the door. Come in, she called out. Ah, Miss Haverstein, I am so glad that you were able to complete the experiment. We obtained some very interesting data. No need to be embarrassed. We are scientists, after all. Would you like to formally meet your partner? he asked. The nervousness in Macy's belly grew, and she felt like a whole colony of butterflies were about to launch out of her abdomen. She nodded. Dr. Farrow removed the blindfold. Macy blinked against the lights, which had been turned up to a normal level of brightness. She looked around the room expectantly, wanting to drink in Peter with her eyes like her pussy had just drunk his love cream. What she saw horrified her at first. Peter was nothing more than a robot with several appendages attached. A pair of lips, a hand, the dildo vibrator, and, of course, the cock that had just conquered her. Her gaze shot back to Dr. Farrow, her eyes demanding an explanation. He held up his hands by way of apology. Now, Miss Haverstein, I know you probably feel confused, but there's no way you would have reacted as naturally as you did if you knew a robot was providing you with sexual gratification. I do need you to be honest. Would you say this was your best sexual encounter with a member of the male sex? He asked. Macy wanted to tear him a new one. This entire week she'd been obsessing over something that was a programmable hunk of metal. But 
she couldn't deny that the last hour had been her most intense, intimate encounter. So she just nodded. Excellent. Glad to hear it. As you have probably gathered, we programmed Peter with all of your conscious and subconscious turn-ons. Would you say that he met your expectations? Macy nodded again, a tear streaming down her cheek. What's wrong, Miss Haverstein? Dr. Farrow asked. I'm just so disappointed. I thought I'd made a real connection with someone. And it turns out that my Mr. Wright isn't even human, she replied sadly. Your Peter is in the developmental stages. Our eventual goal is to create a model that is as lifelike as possible. The appendages will be hidden within the internal casing. The final product will easily pass as human. However, to get to that stage, we'll need a lot more data, Dr. Farrow said. Macy looked at him, the full realization of what he had just offered her sinking in. Oh, you mean I would continue to see Peter then? she asked. Yes, naturally we need to further analyze the emotional component to this sort of arrangement, and the design staff will want to analyze the physics needed to fulfill certain sexual positions, he responded. Would Peter be seeing other participants? Macy asked, feeling foolish for being jealous of anyone else touching her sex robot. Not without your permission or your presence. Dr. Farrow answered. Macy weighed her options. Can you get me more extra credit? Miss Haverstein, I will personally guarantee you will graduate no matter how poor your effort, should you agree to continue participating in this study, Dr. Farrow offered. I'm in, Macy responded, but... I'd rather keep the blindfold on at all times, until the final prototype is complete, she said. Very good. When would you like your next session to be? As soon as possible, she replied. The doctor swept out of the room with his assistant and dimmed the lights back down. Macy retied the blindfold. Okay, Peter, show me what that mechanical mouth can do. She commanded. As you wish, mi amor, he replied. And that's our story. If one story a month isn't enough for you, remember, you can get two more episodes every month over on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash nobilis. Right now, patrons are receiving chapters of the third book in the Monster Whisperer series. After that... Well, I just finished polling my upper-tier patrons for what to write next. Join up and find out what that might be. You have been listening to the Novellus Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Until next time, listen hard. <laughs>